Thank you for joining me today. My name is Wenham and today we're going to be looking at transformers. So we only have one learning objective today and that's to be able to understand and explain how a transformer works. So if you're ready, let's get right into it. Now I have a picture of a transformer. I realize it looks like a bit of a busy diagram, but I'm sure if we break down uh, it all into manageable sizes, we'll understand it all, okay? So first thing you need to understand is that all transformers run on AC current, okay? Transformers cannot run on DC current, so that's straight away something I need to understand. Okay, now we also need to understand is that a transformer is really made up of two things, a primary coil and a secondary coil. Now, the biggest difference between these two coils is the number of windings. Number of windings. Yeah, and so that's uh, really obvious here because you can see that our primary co coil here has way more windings. Like I would say nearly triple the number of windings uh, than the secondary coil here. Okay, so that's uh, the primary difference in a transform, right? We have two coils. Both of them have different numbers of windings on them. Okay, so we have our AC going into our primary coil here and then we have our secondary coil going to our output so that's powering whatever like uh, we want so say this was a step up transformer which if you remember the national grid those are right at the start of the power station right where they step up the voltage and reduce the current for long-term transfer so if this was a trans uh, sorry a step up voltage we would get incoming uh, voltage from the actual power generator itself and an outgoing voltage to the pylon you can see that our primary coil and secondary coil are not connected. So, actually, you know what? That's kind of ugly. Let's not do that. Primary coil and secondary coil are not connected. Okay? Lots of students get confused thinking, oh, like there must be some sort of like hidden link between these two. There's no such hidden link, right? The iron core here serves an an another purpose entirely, right? These cables are actually insulated, which means that they're covered with uh, an insulator. Uh, it's usually some sort of like resin, right? Which prevents them from conducting within the iron core, right? A lot of students get confused about that. I think, oh yeah, iron's a conductor, so electricity must be flowing through the iron core. No, nope. no electricity flows through iron core. So what is the iron core actually there for? Well, that's because this is serving the exact same purpose it did uh, as in an, in an electromagnet. Okay, so when we have our AC input here, our AC input goes into a primary coil. The primary coil is now and uh, now has current and uh, current flowing through it. When it has current flowing through it, it generates a magnetic field around it, right? So this is like a solenoid, so it generates a magnetic field, something like this. Okay, now, that uniform magnetic field within the solenoid is now collected by the iron core and the iron core is now magnetized. Magnetized due to primary coil uh, magnetic field. Okay, so now our iron core is magnetized. Our iron core it also has its own magnetic field inside it. So let's do that in blue, right? Now our iron core itself is also magnetized. So actually, let's do it in blue so it's better to see, right? Our iron core itself is magnetized. Now we have a, uh, a solenoid within a magnetic field. So this means that, and um, because this magnetic field, and one thing that you need to remember about this magnetic field is that this magnetic field here that's induced into the iron core as a result of the primary coil is constantly alternating. All right, so mag field constantly alternating well that's because we have an ac input and remember i told you that an ac input uh is sort of like flicking a switch switch on and on and off uh 50 times a second in this case right because if this was plugged into mains file if you flick a switch on and off 50 times a second we get current flowing on and off through our primary coil 50 times a second that means that the magnetic field around the primary coil itself is also turning on and off at 50 times a second and so the iron core magnetic field is also turning on and off 50 times a second. I know that I've said that a lot now, but I hope you understand that. Okay, so now what's happening to our secondary core? Well, our secondary core is experiencing the generator effect. Uh, effect. Because remember, the generator effect is when a, uh, a, a conductor 
is uh, placed within a changing magnetic field a, a voltage and a current is induced within it because of our alternating input our magnetic field around the secondary coil is also alternating and so uh the secondary coil uh let's no nah, let's just do that in words secondary coil experiences an alternating magnetic field thus a voltage and a current is induced within it and so that voltage and current gets sent off to the output okay i realized that was a lot and uh, it was a bit all over the place but again let's work through logic from the very top here we have my ac input into the primary coil my uh alternating current uh causes there to be uh alternating current within the primary coil which causes there to be a changing magnetic field around the primary coil now this changing magnetic field also magnetizes the iron core with another changing magnetic field now the changing magnetic field are in the iron core um surrounds the secondary coil the secondary coil experiences a change in magnetic flux which is what the field actually is right it's magnetic flux now the secondary coil experiencing the change in magnetic flux causes there to be an induced voltage and current and that's really how uh, generators work now we're going to move on to a bit more specifics about the generator equations there are only really two generator equations you need to know but they're long ones so let's get right into them now the way you should understand is that all the generator equations they all want to tell you what's ex what's happening in the primary coil compared to what's happening in the secondary coil and uh, if you remember the basic thing about generators is the fact that one coil has a different number of turns to another coil and this again is reflected in the generator equation themselves so if we have a look at the number of turns on the primary so this is usually uh, sometimes given the thing pt right over the number of turns on secondary es right that this is equal to the uh, so this this ratio is equal to the voltage uh across primary over the voltage across the secondary uh if i give it to you in just in symbols that ends up being pt over Yes, is equal to VP over VS. Now, so this is really telling you that the ratio between the number of turns on each coil is equal to the ratio of, of the voltages between the two uh, coils as well. Now, say I wanted to uh, say I had the number of turns in the primary, the number of turns in the secondary, and the voltage across the secondary, but I wanted the voltage across primary. Well to uh all, all we ha would have to do is rearrange this equation and so because we want to get rid of uh, vs from the bottom all we do is multiply by vs to get vp here so i do the number of turns on the primary over the number of turns on the secondary multiplied by the voltage across the secondary is equal to the voltage across the primary and so on and so on and so on i've just i've just done a simple uh, rearranging here because a lot of people see these ratios and they get suddenly get confused and they suddenly forget all of their basic maths really about rearranging equations but i just want to show you that you can treat this as just a normal equation okay um i've used p here for the number of turns but this often varies but all you need to understand is that one side of the equation is always going to be uh comparing the coils right and the other side of the equation is always going to be comparing whatever quantity so i've given you voltage here but this could just as easily be current as well it would be exactly the same it would be current across primary over current across secondary is equal to uh turns across primary over turns across secondary and you can see that if we have primary on top for one of them we also have primary on top for the other one and so on and so on and so on so that's our first uh, generator equation now our second one compares the power in each of these coils now if we remember power is equal to i multiplied by v so we have a power in this one here so let's just call that power primary pp 
and we have a power here in the secondary as well. Uh, PS, so if we were to break these down, what do you think we would get? Well, what we really end up with is current across the primary, IP, uh, multiplied by current across, uh, sorry, voltage across the primary is equal to the current across the secondary multiplied by the voltage across the secondary. And that's all it is, because you remember that there is voltage flowing through here, and there is also current flowing through here. And there is also voltage flowing through here, and also current flowing through here. Just it's different because of the ratio of the turns. And that is our second generator equation.